Hey y'all, welcome to today's fishing trip. If you saw my last video, I was fishing shallow for a channel cat using a cane pole and some stink bait that I make. At the end of the video, I asked anybody if they'd want to see a um, jug line fishing video. Well, to my surprise, I got quite a bit of response. A lot of comments saying, hey yeah, we'd like to see one. So that's what we're going to do today. I've got two different kinds of jugs and I really they're not jugs. This is a piece of styrofoam. It's a cylinder shape like this. The, the line wraps around it, you know, it kind of holds it really good. You know, you can stick it in a bucket, so that's good, and it stays out of the way. I've had these things probably 20-something years. It's really interesting the way it works because it sits on the water like this right here, flat. You hook the line in this little deal here. It looks like it came out of an old trailer house window or something, you know what I mean, right there. When a fish gets on it, it flips that thing over. So the hot pink sides up like this right here. So anyhow, I'm gonna throw out, I've got six of these like this. They've got a little weight on them right here too also. So I actually, they're gonna sit on the bottom. They're not gonna just drift across the lake. I got six of these. And then I've got one like this right here that I found years and years and years and years ago. It was hanging up in a tree or something like that. It's only got about 10 or 12 foot of line on it. So I'm gonna put it up shallower. We're going to try it too, see what happens, but uh, I've only got one hook on it. I've got two hooks on these others, like this right here, there's two of them. See, I don't know if you can see all the spider webs. I kind of knocked all the dirt dauber nests off of them. But i got to get them marked up. i got to tag them. Here in the state of Texas, you got to have a tag on them. I think it's good for about six days, if I'm correct. So i got to get them tagged, and then i got to get some bait on them. We're going to use... on. A lot of it. I got some old shad here that I caught last year and froze. So we're going to try that shad too. I got my casting net right here. That's a whole nother experience trying to throw that thing. Especially when you hadn't done it in a long time. So I'm going to try to catch some perch or bluegills or something like that in this. Or maybe some fresh shad and see what happens. But uh, I'm going to get these, these few lines set out. And then I'm going to go try to run and catch some live bait with that right there. Now let's see here, get us a piece of bait and cut these uh, frozen shad up in pieces and stick them on these things and see if anything likes them. I don't know, being that they've been frozen all that long, I don't have any idea if they're going to like them or not, but that's what we got, so well, they sure are slimy. may as well stick this one out first it's right here handy it's probably going to drift a little bit because it ain't shallow enough right here for that little line it don't have it about eight foot maybe i need to go up by the bank one thing i do remember about doing this last time it was my wife and i and we only had uh like i say about six of these things with two hooks on them and man it liked to work us to death as soon as we'd get some set out a little ways before we could get finished baiting the others those done flipped over and started getting fish on them and we were using live brim i think it was probably around the first week in june or something man i tell you what the channel cat was eating them bluegills up We'll start out throwing them over here. This one, get it up somewhere shallow. See if a turtle won't eat it. I don't know. We'll just chunk it out there and see what happens. It didn't go to the bottom. Look, it's floating up like that. It's too deep. Well, that didn't work out right. I think it's supposed to be standing up when a fish gets on it, not when you chunk it out. Let's see if it's shallow enough here. Yeah, I think that's how that's, that one's supposed to work. See, it just lays flat like that on the water, and when a fish gets on it, it'll stand up maybe. And that will be the shallowest one. It's probably about six, eight feet. I'll get out here in the center and put those others. It's probably 12, 15 feet right in here, and it gets out into 25, 25 foot that way. Those others that I got, these... These here got plenty of line on them, so you can just un 
wind it off there and set it however deep you want it. If you can figure out how to get them unraveled. So we're going to hook up some bait. This is probably a number or a six alt, probably a six alt straight shank hook. And that's what we used to use on all the trout lines and jugs and stuff like that back then. Actually on that little bitty hook right there, the last time I did this, we caught a 66 and uh, 66 and three quarter pound flathead on that little bitty hook. But had it not been on a jug, it probably would have bent it out because it was on one of these floats though. It was swimming all around and I was able to grab a hold of it. You know, and if it pulled hard, I could let go and it would just swim around and wear itself out till we could go ahead and grab a hold of it because otherwise it probably would have just bent that little hook out. And I'm just gonna stick these little pieces of bait on there and throw these things out. And I'm gonna put two of them on these. I'll put a head piece and a body piece on each one of them. Maybe they'll bite good. Last, like I say, last time I did this, man, they, they bit so fast with those live brim that you couldn't even hardly get going very far. There'd be one on it. Now that I got it as deep as it's supposed to be, I'm just gonna wrap this little deal here around this, this thing, this little plastic thing. Stick it right in that notch. And when it gets one, it ought to turn it over. And it'll just float like that right there. Hopefully, if it works the right way, when one gets fish gets on it, it'll pull it over if he's big enough to turn it over. All right, well, we got them all scattered out here. All the way up through yonder. And I'm going to run over and get try to get some bait with um, this casting net. And see how my skills are with that. We'll try this a few minutes. I don't know how it's going to work out. A lot of times these bluegills will get up around this rock though, around this bridge. Ah, that didn't open good. Gonna have to have it bigger than that to catch anything. I can't get the thing to open. I got a, a bass which I can't keep. It's good to see some small ones in this lake because they sure need it here. Pretty little fella, ain't he? He just hatched. Y'all yeah, been throwing this cast net for over 30 minutes and that's all I got so far. I don't believe he's big enough to work, do you? Well, y'all went through that casting net for an hour and caught one little old bitty bluegill. And now I'm back up here where my jug things are. One of them's turned over right here, but it ain't moving around very much. I see another one turned over up there, I think. And now y'all know why I got frozen shad. Cause I can't catch any of those darn things. And when I do, they're going in the freezer. Let's see what's going on with this one. There's something looks like a turtle or a gar shredded the bottom one here. See turtles or something. We'll pack another piece of meat on there. This one's got a fish on it, guys. Got a fish, what is it? This always excited me when I was a kid to kind of figure out, like when we were running trot lines, not knowing what was on them. Oh, let's see what, what's on this one. It's a little channel cat. Oh, Lee. He stole both the, both the baits off of there. A little old bitty thing got that thing all in his face. I want you to look at the mess that little rascal caused with my system here. Golly. Well, 
There ain't nothing on this one. I'll run out of bait quick doing it like this. Well, y'all got them all baited back out again. Only one catfish, one little channel cat. That's a lot of bait and a lot of work for that little thing. I'm gonna let these See if they get anything on them here for a little while longer and then I um, think I'm gonna remove up the lake. One of our jugs is turned over, maybe two of them. You know, I don't know why I call them jugs. They're not jugs. What in the world should we call these things? They just styrofoam. Seems like jug fishing has changed to whatever you can find to float line fishing instead of jugs. Hardly anybody uses jugs anymore. something it ain't very big though another channel cat he's a little better than that last one though isn't he not a bad catfish push him back in the lake and let him get bigger Well, when I was taking that one off, another one flipped over. So they're biting okay. Just ain't, the uh, percentages ain't that high just yet. I'm hearing some thunder off in the background. I don't know how long I'll get to fish. Nothing on this one. That's looking pretty nasty right there. Well, y'all, them darn storms ran me off the lake yesterday, but I'm back out here after it. I'm in a different area now. I stopped on the way up here and threw that darn casting net a few more times, and I and I caught so, uh, six bluegill, I believe, and one big shad. So that's real good with my limited abilities <laughs> at throwing that darn thing. I'm in this big flat up here. It's shallow, shallower water. Let's see right here. I don't know if you can see that. It's only 10 foot. I'm actually just going across this flat with a side imaging, kind of looking for some fish. I haven't seen any yet, but right up here is where I mentioned that I'd caught that 66 and three quarter pounder on that jug. And then right over yonder on that side, in this part of the flat, on the, it's over there on the other over side of there, I caught a 73 pound flathead over there. So I, I'm going to try this area first, right out here, and then if I don't catch anything, I may move over on that side. I'm gonna set some out here in this flat right here and then I'm gonna move over. There's a little ditch over yonder on the edge of them trees. I think I'm gonna move over and put some down through that edge of that thing. See, maybe those flatheads are hanging closer to that brush. There's all kinds of timber in this lake and this is just actually a, a clear area where there was an old hay field, hay meadow, years ago. But we're gonna see if it'll hold a few. It looked like I saw some blue cat across there when I was coming down through there so hopefully hopefully we'll be able to get us a couple I'm gonna put the bluegills on the top hook and the cut shad on the bottom and we'll see see what happens I gotta stick this biggest bluegill I got on this smallest float that's a big rascal ain't it man i already just eat that thing Woo! Ooh. it's gonna have to be a, a golly whopper to hit that thing as soon as i got that little green one out I looked over and this one done flipped over nothing bluegill Ooh, the bluegill's been hit though buddy he's got some teeth marks on him well we've got them all scattered out now some are down this little ditch down through here got three down through that and then there's uh three more going across this little flat right here and then the small one you know the little green one way over yonder this is such a shallow area i had to go way up there to be able to find a spot where it hit the bottom already had two bites no fish yet man this is my kind of fishing i got one over here we had two of them go down one of them's way over there flipped over and this one here's flipped over and this one's been going under kind of bigger fish on it so i came to this one i don't know if there's even anything on the other one there it goes look at that trying to pull that big float look at that golly man that might be a good one there let's see what it is 
Oh, oh, we don't want to rip that little hook out of his face. If we can help it. Oh, yeah, look at here. Yeah, look at here what we got. Yes, sir. Look at that's a big old channel cat right there, buddy. Oh, yeah, there we go. We got him now. Look at that. Man, that's a good one. That's a good channel cat right there, man. Nice one. Oh, we'll get him back in the water. That's a good one for the first one. I'm gonna check this one right here. I, I saw this one flip over a little while ago, but then it just turned back over white. I don't know what's going on with it. I see it, it looks like it's kind of bobbing a little bit. I feel something on there. The brim's still there. Oh no. Oh, what's it? Look at that thing. Golly. What in the world am I going to do with that? Dang needle nose gar. Well, you got to get him in here and try to get him off, I guess. Golly. He's heavy. Wow, he's up. he's mad too. Gee whiz. Well, the bluegill died on that hook that this creature here was on. So I cut him. I'm gonna put him on there. Put his head on there. Put his body on there. We'll use him like this. Maybe that'll get him. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. He's pulling that thing under. Look at that. As soon as I ain't even got rid of this ugly thing yet. Look, that's down in the floor. This one, something else got a hold of this. And that's a pretty good float for that thing to be pulling under, man. Here it goes. What is that? He's strong. Strong, I don't know. Feels strange. Look at them bubbles. Oh, lordy. A big old turtle. Oh no. Big old soft shell turtle. I may have to let him have that hook. Oh my gosh, look at the size of that soft shell turtle. No, I got him in the foot. I can let him go, but golly, look how big he is. Oh my goodness, his, his neck is a foot long. I don't know if you can see that or not. Wow. Woo, he made some ugly noises too. He's biting that thing. Oh, thank you, Jesus, he got off. I didn't want to have to tackle with that thing. Goodness gracious, he was ugly. And I'm telling you what, that beak on him looks sharp, too. Oh, man. I hope he don't get back on again. I bet you somebody down in Louisiana won't eat that thing, though. What do y'all think? Whew, that had my heart racing, not knowing what I was going to do with it. I'm gonna check these others, I think. Oh, that one just flipped over out yonder. Right as I'm sitting here talking. I'm just gonna see if they got any bait on them. Oh, I feel fish on this one. I'll be dang. Bluegill's still there. Uh oh, channel cat. Another catfish. He wasn't big enough to turn that thing over, really, I guess. Not a bad little fish though. Those, those good eating sight kind right there. Back in there. Maybe one of y'all can answer this. Why in the world are these bluegill dying? It ain't like I hooked them in the guts or nothing. You can tell a fish has had a hold of him. See the scales are gone right here. But this water, I was only eight and 10 foot, you know, and why are they dead? You'd think there'd be plenty of oxygen. I'm gonna cut them up and use them for bait. Yeah, I keep missing fish. What do y'all think? I need to put circle hooks on these things? Maybe that'll work better. No sooner than I checked out when this one flipped over. I'm telling you, I only have six of these plus that one up there. And it'll work you to death, man. I mean, you're just going back and forth trying to get these fish off and bait them up. It's fun. I sure wish I had somebody else with me though to help. Let's see what's on this one. Yeah, he's popping 
feel him down there. Not a bad channel cat. Not bad at all. Hooked right in the corner of the mouth too, that's good. Come right off. I'll take a mess of them, man. That'd be some fine eating right there. Get back in there. I got three of these things flipped over now. I think I'm fixing to roll them up and move to another spot. I don't know, it's something. Turtles found me or something. Oh, here's something on this one. Another channel cat. Not a bad one. That's a good one, actually. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah, not a bad channel cat right there. They're getting bigger. But I'm going to move over to another place. I'm going to wind these up, check these others that are flipped over. And I think I'm going to move to another spot over here on the other side and see, see what's going on over there. Get back in there. All right, y'all. I moved locations. Um, I gave it back there. I gave that two hours back that way. And uh, you saw what I caught. And, uh, man, I just kept... I, there's so much that you're not even going to see because that gum, I was getting bites like crazy. But I'm not catching them. I don't know if it's they're too small or they're trash fish or... Um, Maybe I need to put on circle hooks. I, I'd like y'all's thoughts about that. Put that down in the comments, if you will. Um, but anyway, I moved out here to deeper, and I'm on the edge of the boat lane, and I've got them strung up down through here. It's about 20 feet all down through here on this edge, and I just spaced them out. I don't know. They're probably 100-plus yards or something like that, maybe. I'm going to sit here about an hour and see what happens. As you can see, anybody can catch fish like this if I can. Heck, I don't even know what I'm doing. But it's a good way to find out where they are, really. Um, this particular lake's full of brush. I think I might have mentioned that before. Um, and you can't just drift down through it like you would with uh, open open lakes, maybe for blue cat or something. You'll just stay hung up. You lose all your baits. So fishing with something like this, it's stationary, just sitting there in one spot and being able to spread them out uh, up and down and cover a, a pretty good area is a pretty good way to find out if there's any fish in there. You know, that particular area back over there, I mean, as soon as I got the baits out there, man, they started hitting it. I wasn't even done. I wasn't done baiting the hooks, and they started flipping over. So that tells you that there's a lot of fish in the area, and then um, you could always go back in there with a rod and reel, and, hey, I may do that if you'd like to see that. So maybe you guys can give me some tips. What do you think is the best system for doing jug line fishing? I mean, is it the noodle style, like that one that I have right here? You know, this one here, well, this, is it that style that's best? Is it best to fix a regular jug, like an old bleach or milk jug or something like that? Is that better? Any advice would be greatly appreciated. But uh, I, I love to catfish. I love to get out and catch big fat. I like chasing big catfish, and uh, I really like catching them on that cane pole. And if you missed that video, I'm going to put a link to it right up here. Oh, we got something. Let's see what it is. Another channel cat. Good eating size fish right there. 